Welcome back to How to Cake It. This week, I'm going to highlight some tropical fruit cakes. I was just at the Caribbean Baking Awards. Maybe you've noticed my tan. And I'm still feeling tropical. I'm trying to hold on to that. One of my favorite tropical fruits that I've caked on the channel is a mango. But to bake my mango cakes, I baked cakes that I dyed, vanilla cake that I dyed to look like the color of the flesh of a mango. And then, of course, you know, I layered, leveled, carved, put cakes together just to get that perfect mango shape. What I like about caking fruit is no fruit looks exactly the same as the other one. So there is some leeway. I'm not going to say it's beginner. Orhan. I made a mango buttercream by using mango puree in my Italian meringue buttercream. I also put a little bit of food coloring in it just to get it to match the cake. I began to simple syrup, fill and stack, and now I have this beautiful crumb coated mango. Well, it's technically just kind of like a deep yellow blob at this point, not a mango yet. Mangoes, I'm on mango.org. Mango has its own website. Oh yes, who named these? There's a mango named Edward. That doesn't sound like a mango name, Edward. Now, I don't know what to do, guys. I don't know what type of mango I caked. The next thing I did was cover the mango. So because I'm caking the common mango, I think of it as being yellow underneath or the flesh or the skin of it is yellow. And then there's green and red coloring. It's easiest to cover it yellow and then paint certain areas green and red. Whereas if I cover it red or green, it'll be very hard to paint yellow over those darker colors. And now is the fun part. Now is when the transformation happens. I've painted a lot of cakes on the channel and, and most of the time I think you see me use wet paint, meaning I dilute the color dust with alcohol and paint. But because the mango sort of colors in as it ripens, I decided to use dry paint. So just use the dust on its own and paint it onto the mango. And it's not supposed to look like, you know, bad blush. You know what I mean? When you put on blush, you don't wanna just see two circles of pink on your face. You're gonna blend it as if you were naturally blushing. I think I should do a makeup tutorial. I think I should paint my face with color dust. Uh, oh, you know what a mango has that I'm a big fan of? A nub. A mango has a nub. I created the mango nub out of a little bit of gum pen. <laughs> Don't laugh at what the nub looks like at this point. I used a piping tip to add an indent, put it on the cake. And then th th the interesting thing about the nub of any fruit really is it's never really the color of the cake. There's always like a brown tinge to it because that's the part that attaches the fruit to the tree. Uh, so you really wanna paint the nub, make it look realistic. It's an essential part of any fruit, even though I don't think it's really called a nub. So now that the paint is dry, the nub is dry, this mango needs some speckles because as mangoes ripen, they get very freckled. For this, I put on gloves. I'm using brown food coloring diluted with alcohol. And then I just sort of flicked the brush bristles so that the mango would be splattered. I don't want it to look splattered like a Jackson Pollock painting. I wanted to look splattered like a fruit. And I ended up making some of the splatters too heavy. And I did that trick that men do when they're shaving. You know, like if you cut yourself and you're bleeding, you take a little piece of tissue to yeah. stop it. I did that to the mango to try and absorb the extra food coloring because if you leave a lot of food coloring on the surface, it might run or spread and those little specks just looked too dark. How do you become part of the mango organization? National Mango Board. <laughs> do other fruits have a national board? Oh. Do you think there's a, a watermelon board? Yes, watermelon.org. Oh, pineapple.org is coming soon. <laughs> Papaya.org may be for sale. Orhan, do we jump on this? We could run the papaya world. We could name the papaya. Yeah, one's named Orhan, one's named Yolanda. I don't know why I keep talking about the mango like there was only one mango. There were two. I did the same thing to both up to this point. But then I decided to cut one mango open, not to eat it yet, 
but to make it look like a cut mango. So I had to create the inner fleshy part of the mango as if it was cut. And that's for the body of the mango that's left on the board and is now exposing cake. And then the cut piece, which I'm gonna flip over and make it look as if it's scored. The hardest part was trimming the edges so that it blended with the fondant that's along the side of the cake. You know what I mean? Because really there would be no seam or no edge in it a real mango. There would just be the flesh and the really thin skin. Mangoes can be kind of stringy, and when a mango's really good and really ripe, I find it a deeper yellow in the center than the outside. So I wanted to reflect that, made some paint, painted both surfaces of this cut mango, and then we laid it all out, and I love the way it looks. up is pineapple. Who doesn't love a pineapple? Is pineapple the king of tropical fruits? Oh, you think because of its crown? The pineapple? Maybe it's the queen, actually, not the king. I mean, there is no pineapple.org. It's coming soon. So it's obviously not high up in line. I need to start with a disclaimer before we talk about this pineapple cake. I was totally pissed off when I made this cake because everyone was out of yellow color dust. That's that's why my pineapple is green. You want me to redo a pineapple? You know what? You know that there's, you know what there is that I could do. I'm gonna write this down. There's a type of pineapple that I might cave. I'm not saying anything because I'm not sure if I can find it in Toronto. Pink. Are you serious? Yeah. Why are we whispering like they can't hear? I'm wearing a microphone. <laughs> what I did is I baked one cake darker because when you cut a pineapple, the core sort of sticks out color-wise. You know what I mean? You can see the core. Cut a secret chamber out of the center. Use the same cutter to cut out darker circles of yellow cake and put them in the middle so that when I cut the cake, you'd see this core. To fill this cake, I made a pineapple buttercream by mixing pineapple jam into my buttercream and some food coloring. I filled and stacked the cakes until they were high enough, chilled them, and then I carved it um, into the pineapple shape. The key to making the pineapple look realistic on the outside is this mold that I have here that I purchased from someone on, I think it was Instagram or Etsy. I chose to cover the cake first with a thin layer of fondant and then roll my fondant into this and then sort of cut it like a puzzle. And I puzzled it together. And this is where I get so annoyed watching this video because I needed more yellow. And the problem with this is yellow is a primary color, so I couldn't make it. Now it's time for the crown on the pineapple. I used gum paste that I dyed green. I will paint it to enhance it. And I needed to wire it and bend the leaves. I actually molded the leaves or, or set the leaves to dry on wine bottles. Don't ask me where I got all the empty wine bottles. And I just made as many leaves as possible. When make more than you need, trust me. And then the trickiest part is getting all these leaves to come together and look like a crown. So I just add all the leaves, add the curly ones down at the bottom, and there you have it. It's a really green pineapple. <laughs> Moving on to papaya cake, another tropical favorite fruit of mine, but I'm gonna go on a papaya rant. One thing about papaya is they're rarely ripe enough when I buy them here. I can get one that's ripe, but not really good and ripe. Like when I eat a papaya in Grenada, it's almost like red inside. It's so ripe and so big, but it's okay. I baked these cakes in my egg pans, which I get a lot of questions about because they're discontinued and I happen to own three sets. Oh, wow. But every time I make a cake in that pan, somebody asks without fail, like, where did you get that? And they're discontinued, they're, they're not. I've had those pans since like 2001. Are you writing them in the safe? So. I am, they're locked up. I carved both cakes to look like papayas. 
then I had to hollow out and create a secret chamber in each one, like the center of the papaya. I simple syrup the cakes, of course, and then for the papaya that's gonna be closed, I need to work on the inside first because I'm gonna close up the cake. And I covered that inside part with some yellow fondant because when you cut a papaya, that inner part uh, reads a little bit yellow as opposed to the orange of the papaya. And then I added little swirly pieces of the yellow fondant and most importantly, the papaya seeds. So for the papaya seeds, I used crisp pearls, which are basically little bits of rice cereal coated in chocolate. I tossed them in a little bit of piping gel. So I filled it with the seeds. I did this to both halves. Then I iced carefully around those chambers with a little bit of yellow buttercream. And then I put the cakes together. And then I'm going to crumb coat those as well. Then I ice all of the cakes. And now I can move on to my favorite part, which is covering and making them look like papaya. So I covered each cake with yellow fondant. I really thought about this because papayas are mainly green on the outside, but like I said, green is a really difficult food coloring color and I thought it would just be too dark and too matte. So I'd rather cover it yellow and then paint it green. I am dry brushing these papayas like I do with my mangoes. So I'm just using green color dust, some yellow color dust, and it's a lot of fun. But this, these are cakes that you really want the real thing in front of you. You really want a model. And then I really had fun. Papayas are a delicate fruit, so it's very rare that you see a perfect papaya. If it's perfect, it's not ripe. Once it starts to soften, it dents very easily on the outside. And so what I did is I used a knife to sort of scrape off paint in certain areas um, and create those realistic imperfections. So like my mangoes, I also splattered on brown paint, um, but I also sort of brushed some on to highlight the dents because papayas are very, very delicate. Now I'm gonna flip one of these papaya halves upside down and we're gonna see exposed cake. So what I need to do is cover the exterior flesh in a papaya colored fondant, add the little yellow fondant squigglies, and again, my piping gel coated crisp pearls to the center. You know the papaya seeds made waves on TikTok because they're supposed to help cleanse parasites? I don't know if I'm gonna eat papaya seeds, but I would definitely eat these seeds because the chocolate crisp pearls. Leave a comment below. Out of these three fruits, mango, pineapple, and papaya, which one do you choose? If you could only eat one fruit for the rest of your life. And does it have a website? And does your fruit have, if you're not eating a fruit with its own website and organization, what are you doing? Okay.